our environment is getting progressively degraded because of overexploitation of natural resources. Population pressure, indiscriminate tree felling, overgrazing, unsound agricultural practices, all these and other factors contribute towards this degradation. In a degraded landscape with little or no tree cover and subsequently little soil cover, the rainwater is not able to percolate into the ground and flows away to the streams. Along with this water, we lose rich topsoil, which is essential for any vegetation to grow. It is a vicious cycle. No topsoil means no vegetation, which leads to an increased runoff of water and a further erosion of topsoil. Yeah, in the beginning, of course, we were having uh, work with the cooperative societies, then also with the Land Development Bank, the Maharashtra State Cooperative Bank, mostly to take wells for small marginal farmers. The groundwater at the time was still about uh, 20, 20, 30 feet. Then it went down to 80 feet. So when we saw the groundwater receding to 80 feet, then we said, now we have to stop this, no? So in 72, we had a big meeting in Narangabad with about 80 NGOs, and then we decided to change our policy. And uh, the only thing was naturally to, instead of exploitation, you have to arrange for refilling the pot. The water, the water table had to be brought up. And watershed development program was the only, is the only way of doing it. आपले या कार्यक्रमाचं मुख्य उद्देशच काय होता की नैसर्गिक जी संपत्ती आपली या नैसर्गिक संपत्तीचं जतन करायचं द प्राइमरी ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ अ प्रोग्राम इज टू कंजर्व अवर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस द टॉप 6 इंचेस ऑफ सोइल आर द मोस्ट फर्टाइल मोस्ट ऑफ द सोइल न्यूट्रिएंट्स आर प्रेजेंट इन दैट 6 इंच लेयर द टॉप सोइल इज इरोडेड एवरी ईयर विद फ्लोइंग वाटर वी हैव टू प्रिवेंट दैट द फूल जे वाहून जाते प्रत्येक वर्षी ते वाहून जाणारे फुलाला थांबवणं हा एक आपला मुख्य उद्देश होता त्याच्यानंतर पाणी जे आपलं होतं जसं पाण्याचा थेंब पडायचा तसंच तोही वाहून जायचा त्या पाण्याच्या थेंबाला तिथंच थांबवणं सिमिलरली रेन वॉटर ऑल्सो फ्लोज अवे विच नीड्स टू बी स्टॉप्ड द स्पीड ऑफ फ्लोईंग वॉटर टू बी रिड्यूस सो दॅट इट डज नॉट वॉश अवे द टॉप सॉईल म्हणून आपण सो आर वर्क बेसिकली इन्वॉल्व्ह वॉटर अँड सॉईल कॉन्झर्वेशन म्हणजे हे जे नैसर्गिक साधन संपत्ती आपली त्या साधन संपत्तीचे जतन करण्याचं काम आपली पैशाची बँक आहे It's like a bank. Only if we have money in the bank can we withdraw it. Similarly, the bank of our watershed is our hills. If there are enough trees, grasses and different kinds of treatments, then the hills can conserve or store water inside them. If there is enough shade, then there is less evaporation. The rain water will not fall directly on the soil, but rather its impact will be cushioned by the vegetative cover. Otherwise, the water would carry away the loose topsoil with its force. So we don't have to just stop the water, but we also have to cover it. That is, to protect it from direct sunlight, rainfall and animals. For centuries, human beings have settled along rivers or catchment areas, which form lakes, and provide a regular supply of water to them. The watershed of a particular river or stream is defined as that area which collects the rainwater and drains it through gullies and nalas to a point on that river or stream. It may be small, consisting of a few hectares, or huge, covering several thousands and millions of hectares. What is watershed management? An attempt at conservation, regeneration and the judicious use of all the resources, natural like land, water, plants, animals and human, within a particular watershed, can be referred to as watershed management. The main objective behind watershed development treatments is to reduce the velocity of the fast-flowing water and to increase the time of concentration, which will allow the water to percolate 
and recharge the subsurface aquifers. The watershed development program has to be undertaken from the topmost point, from where the rainwater, after falling, starts flowing downwards. This point is called the ridge. The watershed work has to start from the ridge and progress downwards towards the valley. There are reasons for this. Firstly, soil conservation is essential for watershed development. If only water storage structures are built, the purpose of halting soil erosion is defeated. The soil gets washed away and collects in these structures. Due to this, silt gets deposited over the years and the structure gets filled with soil. This leads to a reduction in its capacity to store water. Thus, neither soil nor water is conserved. Secondly, if there are no barriers at the ridge, the water will flow down at such a high velocity that it will wash away the water storage structures below. Or, the structures will need to be strong enough to withstand this velocity. This means an additional expenditure. Watershed treatments are to be done along contour lines. These are the lines joining the points that are at the same altitude or height. This ensures that the water that collects in the treated area remains at a uniform level, leading to even moisture throughout the land. It also reduces the chances of the structure breaking, as the water pressure at all points on the treatment is the same. From the top of the hill downwards, a series of structures is made that would ensure step-by-step -step slowing down of the fast-flowing water until a part of it is finally stopped. This would result in a control of erosion, a retention of soil fertility, better soil moisture regimes, infiltration and groundwater recharge. A water absorption trench, or VAT, is a large-sized trench excavated along the contour line with a cross-section of one square meter. It is usually excavated in highly degraded wastelands where the slope is steep and there are sudden changes in the slope. To trap rainwater, enable it to percolate to underground aquifers and break the speed of fast-moving water, continuous contour trenches, or CCTs, are excavated. Besides helping in percolation, these CCTs increase soil moisture, which helps in the growth of grass, shrubs, and trees. Depending upon the rainfall, the dimensions of the CCT will vary, and so will the required volume of earthwork per hectare. Since fodder is a basic requirement in rural livelihood, grasses of nutritional varieties can be planted on the mounds of vats and CCTs, as well as grass beds between the CCTs. This not only provides fodder for animals, it also prevents soil erosion. When degraded lands require plantation, CCTs are refilled. The topsoil from the upstream side is excavated and filled in the CCT. Tyanantar, apan CCT khodlyanantar, tar thikani refilling karna rao. After digging the CCTs, we have to refill them. On the hill, we have a CCT which is 30 centimeter wide. We dig soil from the upstream side from up to one meter above the CCT and put this soil into the CCT. The height of the soil column that is refilled in the CCT should be around 45 to 60 centimeters from the bottom of the CCT. And in the center of this refill portion, we plant trees. This treatment results in a good survival rate of plants, generally in places where the soil depth is little. It allows proper aeration, prevents root coiling, and creates a moisture bank 
so necessary for plant growth, especially in arid areas. On the CCTs which are suitably weathered and refilled with earth, trees, grasses and shrubs are planted. These are usually local species which meet local needs of fuel, fodder, timber, fruits and fibre. Where the soil depth is not sufficient, pastures are developed. Where there is enough soil depth, we have dug CCTs on the hill up to 30 cm deep. These are dug across the slope and maintaining the same level. Wherever the terrain is rocky and there is not enough soil, we make bunds using stones. Stone buns are laid along contour lines across the slope to arrest the flow of water and control erosion in areas where soil excavation work is not possible. Stone buns can be erected both in arable as well as non-arable lands. Watershed development also involves taking up area treatments in cultivable lands. Here the objective is to increase the productivity of the land for crops and horticulture through different soil and water conservation measures. A farm bund is useful in areas where the land is almost flat or used for agricultural purposes. Farm buns are erected across a slope, or where not possible, along the boundaries of fields. The top level of the bund should be even throughout, so that the required cross-section is maintained irrespective of the undulations of the plot. Grasses and trees can be grown on the bund for better stability and an additional income for the farmer. An earthen bund raised along the contour line is called a contour bund. Waterways and outlets, either natural or artificially constructed, are necessary for safe disposal of excess water from the field in a manner that minimizes erosion. Outlets are built to remove excess runoff from the farm or contour bunding. Normally, outlets are built at a height of up to one foot from the ground level so as to store some runoff. Two types of outlets are used, the stone outlet and the pipe outlet. A series of structures is constructed along the drainage lines. These structures allow the surplus runoff, which has already been considerably slowed down, to accumulate and get stored along the entire drainage line. This ensures rapid and substantial groundwater recharge and the creation of water banks. Gully plugs are usually made of loose rocks or stones which are locally available. Vegetation is necessary for the stabilization of the gullies. Earthen gully plugs are the earthen embankments which are built across the slope situated on the bed of a gully. A spillway is provided on any one side of the embankment to drain the excess runoff at a non-erosive velocity. When gullies are prominent, instead of small-sized gully plugs, 
Loose boulder structures with batter, sometimes on both sides, are constructed. A gabion structure is similar to a loose boulder structure, but to increase stability, the boulders are enmeshed in wire. Gabion structures are generally constructed in places where the foundation is not available for the construction of a check dam or there is no possibility of a spillway to construct a nala bund. Traditionally, gabion structures are silt control measures, but through some innovations such as a central concrete wall or plastering, it can be converted into a water harvesting structure. A nala bund is an earthen bund of suitable dimensions raised across a nala or gully. The purpose is to hold the runoff in order to create a pond or water body on the upstream side of the bund. A nala bund is always constructed with the facility of a spillway for draining surplus rainwater. These types of structures store rainwater for a period of time which helps in recharging the groundwater. Nala bunds also help to stabilize nalas, gullies and streams. Check dams or check weirs are masonry structures which are constructed to impound surplus runoff. This stored water recharges the underground water. This type of structure is constructed where a nala bund or an earthen structure cannot be made or a site for a spillway is not available. The objective of these different treatments is to make these barren lands productive for forests, pastures and agriculture. Daure Sahib had come to our village. He said that the work should begin at the top and proceed downwards. Now this was a five-year project. I objected. I said that our land is at the bottom. When will my turn come? Instead, why not start from the bottom and work upwards? That way our land will be treated first. Who knows what will happen over five years? What if the project stops halfway? We will be left out. So I said that the work should start from the bottom. If we start work from the bottom and move upwards, then what are the disadvantages? And if we start working from the top and move downwards, then what are the advantages? Can anyone tell me? How can that be? If the work had begun at the bottom, then when it rained, none of the water would have seeped into the soil. All of it would have flowed down with such force that it would have broken the structures at the bottom. Instead, we should start work at the top and make suitable structures at various stages to arrest the flow of the water, from the top of the hill right down to the village. We understood later that the right thing to do is to start work at the top. Dauri Sahib explained it to us. We listened to him and realized that what he said was correct. The correct thing to do is to work downward from ridge to valley. When King Bhagirath wanted to bring river Ganga down from the heaven to the earth, Ganga told him that she would fall down with tremendous force, which the earth would not be able to withstand. That is why Shiva slowed down the impact of the fall by taking it on his head, on which his hair was tied. The water had to go through his matted hair and therefore its pressure was controlled. That is, the pressure of the rainwater falling on the earth needs to be reduced, so that the water can flow without eroding the soil. For example, if someone has long hair, he will need at least a whole tal to dry it. But instead, if the man were bald, then how many tals will he need to dry his head? <laughs> The most uh, vulnerable part of the population are the poorest, which are up in the rich, and these are the Adivasis. So even from poverty elevation point of view, starting watershed development from rich to valley, the first people we touch are the poorest. So that's why 
This is also from the point of view of sociological and ethnological and economical point of view for poverty alleviation, a very important scheme. By doing watershed work from ridge to valley, we do it the way nature intended. Running water is slowed down, flowing water is made to walk, and slow-moving water is stopped, spread around and made to go underground. This is what makes rainwater a nurturing, nourishing force of life, peace and prosperity.